Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about spark plugs. Specifically, we're going to talk about spark plug gap. So, some people ask, well, doesn't Ford, GM, Dodge, whoever your car is manufactured by, wouldn't they know what my car would need? Well, if it's a bone stock car, by all means, go buy OEM specifications. But, as most of us do, you know, we're going to change some stuff up, going to put a supercharger, turbo on it, nitrous, you know, all those are going to affect your ignition. So, either one of those, you know, boost or nitrous, you're going to increase your cylinder pressure. So, it's going to be more taxing on your ignition system to actually create the spark. So, you've got to make some adjustments on that to try to help out your ignition system as best you can. So, let's see. This is a stock plug, just brand new. So, you can see Ford sends these out. The gap is 49 to 53 thousandths is an OEM gap. So on these, you increase the cylinder pressure. So as pressures go up, you're going to have to decrease this gap. You're going to have to tighten it up. So most times you'll just talk to your tuner or whoever's working on the car that has knowledge of what your combination is, what your combination would need. So, and get a suggestion from them on where to start. Most of the, most of the times on the Coyotes, when I'm doing anything, I'll normally start off at about 35 thousandths. That's usually a pretty good start, unless it's a really high boost application, then we'll gap them down a little bit tighter. But most of the time that's a full out race car or something that's really pushing some boost, you know, 20, 20 plus pounds. You're gonna have to gap down tighter than that. So we'll go over some of the methods of gapping them. So let's just move on over here. Okay, so We'll start off with this one. It's a pretty common spark plug tool. I call it a, a slide. As you can see, it starts off really small down here and then wet, wedges itself up so you slide the plug down to increase your spark plug gap if need be. So let's see. Slide it up, get resistance, then you check it and right there. So about 51 thousandths on that. So. This works really well on a copper plug, not so much on the finer tip plugs, if you can see that, how small that is. I mean, you're talking about, right at the tip of the electrode is right at one millimeter on these, so pretty small. Here's a copper plug for reference. As you can see, it's a lot bigger, more robust right there at the electrode, so it can take a little more abuse of pressing against it so wedge it out, open the gap up on a, this style. So that. Then these, don't know the exact name for them. I just call them a, a, wire, a wire top. So you would use this to open or close your gap down. Then each one of these is a specific size wire in it. So this one's 35 thousandths, this one's 44 thousandths. So you'd get this to the point, close your gap down or open it up, whichever way you're going on it. Then you would push this through this area until you got just a little bit of resistance. So again, this one's not bad for just checking. So, I mean, you're not usually forcing these through to actually create your gap. So works pretty good. Then this is a combination one, which has some of the wire ones in it, the gap adjuster, then just filler gauges. I normally rely more on filler gauges on gapping plugs myself. It just, it's a little nicer. So you can adjust your gap down, put the filler gauge in until you get just a little bit of resistance in and out, and go from there. Then this is just a disc. I'm sure everybody saw these at the parts store. Got the different size wires on them. I mainly got these around just more for the opening and closing of the gap. So, then different methods of gapping the plug to get that gap a little smaller. Let me roll this back some. 
if you are gentle just find a nice hard flat surface and you can just tap them gently down like that until you get them closed up some you don't want to try to make it a Olympic sport and actually sit here and all doubled up with your fist and bam 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 next thing you know you've got a plug closed up into the electrode you probably broke it so delicate feel very delicate with it so. then another tool that you don't want to use a hammer does not make a good plug gapping tool as you can see do not use a hammer even though it's snap on and really nice not the proper tool so hopefully this video was a little informative for you on the reasons why you need to decrease the gap on your plugs on most of the aftermarket stuff where you've increased your cylinder pressures because you don't want the spark to get blown out so what is spark blowout basically if you saw a car on the dyno it gets up into a higher rpm and it just starts bucking it's a very abrupt misfire because the cylinder is basically it's lost all of its fire the ignition between the electrode and the strap the cylinder pressure can actually overtake that so it just it blows the spark out so if you've got your plugs gapped down to a starting point you'll take it say if you started off at 35 thousandths I'd suggest gapping down another five thousandths down to 30 thousandths then try that again see if the spark stays lit the whole time as long as you do have an ignition misfire and not another problem as like a dead coil pack a coil pack missing out or something like that but a lot of times spark plugs are a good place to start on a higher rpm just real bucky abrupt misfire so then you get that nice and smooth but now you don't want to go super super tight on your gap you want to just tighten it down you want the gap to be as wide as it can be but as tight as it needs to be to run properly in your car because you get the gap way too tight they're not real street friendly we'll say for idling and driving on the street the the wider you can keep your gap the better better it seems to be in my experience for just idling drive around drivability for that kind of stuff the tighter you get like with really high power, high boost race cars, I mean, most of the time when they're gonna be pushing their car really hard, it's at the track, so drivability is not a huge factor. So, so again, hope you guys like like this little bit of information I was able to share with you today. I'll try to do a, well, I will do, I'll do a video here in a week or so and actually go through some different styles of plugs, you know, your copper plugs, your iridium plugs, the design of them, what makes a hotter plug, the design, what makes a hot plug hot, colder plug cold, stuff like that. I'll cut a few of them apart and show you some of the anatomy of the spark plugs. Hopefully some of you guys can find something useful in that. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, be sure to hit the subscribe button, like, share it around, do all that good stuff. As always, any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them down below, and I will do my best to get you an answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll find somebody that does. Or at least somebody that lies to me and tells me that that's the answer. And I'll try to pass it on. But hopefully I get the right answer. <laughs> Talk to you guys later.